In this lesson, we're going to read a short story together so you can improve your English fluency. Welcome back to J4's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's read the story. Our story is called Stella the Star by Siri. Siri is the digital assistant if you use an Apple device. Now, I came across this story the other day and I thought it was so cute. It was so touching. I wanted to share it with you and you will learn lots of great vocabulary along the way. Notice I said I came across this story. When you come across something, I came across this story, you find it by chance, which means I wasn't specifically looking for a story that I could share with you. I was just doing something totally different and then I came across this story. Now it's possible that you came across this video. So if this video was shown to you and you weren't planning on watching a video to help you learn English through stories, but you thought it sounded interesting, so you clicked on it, you came across this video. And I am so happy you did. And if you're happy as well and you're excited to learn this story and improve your English along the way, then put in the comments, I'm so happy I came across this video. Of course, came is the past simple of the verb to come across and you came across this video. So put it in the comments. Now let's talk about this story, Stella the star. Of course, you see many, many stars in this picture here. And notice how some of the stars are drawn into pictures, a picture of a boat. Do you know what this is called? It's called a constellation, which is a group of stars. And generally we try to form an image of them and we have a name for them, like the Big Dipper you may be familiar with. We call that a constellation. And... Do you notice that Stella is right here in the name Stella? So that's probably where the name Stella the star came from, the fact that this is a constellation. So that was actually very clever of Siri or whoever wrote this story. Now let's get started with the story. Up above in outer space, among all the stars watching over us, there was a lonely little star named Stella. Let's talk about among because this is a great preposition. Among means part of a group. So we have Stella, one star among all the stars. So you can understand the meaning here. One star, part of the group of stars. That's the easier way to use among. We do use this in more advanced ways, which you can feel comfortable with. There was a lot of celebrating among the students. So this is a more advanced way of saying the students were celebrating. The students were celebrating. Not only is it slightly more advanced, but it also changes the focus because notice here, the sentence started, starts with, there was a lot of celebrating. So in this case, it focuses more on the celebrating, the event or the activity or the emotion. And then this is telling you who, and it's the group of students. There was a lot of celebrating among the students. The students were celebrating. There was a lot of confusion among the students. The students were confused. Again, it just focuses on the confusion more. So that's a more advanced way that you can use the preposition among. Before we move on, I'd love to tell you about Link, my personal favorite way to learn a language. Link is a language app that lets you learn from content you love. The reason why I use Link to learn languages and why I recommend you do too is because of the app's focus on input. On Link, you have access to thousands of hours of content that includes both audio and text, so you can both read and listen to English. Plus, you can import content directly from YouTube, Netflix, blogs, the news, and much more. For example, you know those news articles that I like to share in my videos? 
you can easily import them into Link and create your own interactive lessons. You'll be able to easily look up words and phrases, track your statistics, and level up your English ability. I first started using Link because the platform was co-founded by Steve Kaufman. He's a polyglot who speaks 20 languages. His method focuses on input, lots of reading and lots of listening. And that's why Link, the app Steve co-founded, is so effective. It makes reading and listening to content in my target language easier and more enjoyable. Link is available on both desktop and mobile, so you can practice your English anytime, anywhere. And Link is giving all J4S English viewers a 35% discount off a one-year premium plan if you upgrade using my coupon code. You'll also have access to my special Link shelf, which includes my favorite English articles and TV shows. I highly recommend Link because I know it will help you improve your English quickly and you'll have a lot of fun in the process. So use the link in the description to sign up now. Let's continue with our lesson. No one had ever made a wish upon her. Her, of course, being Stella. Remember, Stella's a star. And in North America culture, at least, you can let me know if this is the same in your culture. It probably is. But maybe it's not, so let me know. It's very common to look up at the stars and make a wish on a star. So that's something that we do, especially as children. You'll look up, you'll find a star, and you'll wish upon it. You wish upon the star. Let's talk about upon. This is a more formal way of saying on, but we use it in very specific situations. We use it in a more poetic sense, and that's why it's being used in this poem, this short story. You could say wish on a star, and that would be correct. Or you could say wish upon a star, and that's correct. It sounds more formal, and it sounds more poetic. So in most cases for you, for everyday use, use on. Because I wouldn't say I have a meeting upon Monday. That sounds awkward. You would say I have a meeting on Monday. But there is one time that we commonly use upon, and that is to mean as or shortly after something happened. For example, upon talking to the students, I realized there was a lot of confusion among them. Now, I didn't have to say among them. I could have just ended. I realized there was a lot of confusion because... It's obvious the confusion belongs to the students because that's the only subject I have here, but you can use among them and then you're practicing what we've already learned. So here in this case, upon represents as I talked to the students or after I talked to the students. And I'll add shortly after, shortly after I talked to the students. But notice here, upon talking, you need that verb in ing because upon is a preposition. Here, if you said as I, as I talked, because you have a subject, so you're just going to conjugate your verb. As I talked, shortly after I talked to the students. So this is one area where you can use upon and it does sound natural, but it sounds slightly more, more Formal, I would say. Let's continue. No one had ever made a wish upon her. Oh, poor Stella. In fact, no one on earth had even looked at Stella because she was so small and far away. Let's talk about in fact, because adding transition words to your vocabulary can really help you sound more advanced. In fact, this is only used to emphasize what was previously said. 
So previously, the story said no one had ever made a wish upon her. Okay, so now I'm going to emphasize this and make it even stronger by saying no one had even looked at her. So it makes it even stronger. The fact that Stella, the star, is neglected or lonely is emphasized in fact. In fact, as a transition where you could remove it and the sentence would still be grammatically correct. No one on earth had even looked at Stella, but it just is there to show emphasis because she was so small and far away. Compared to the other stars sparkling in the sky, so notice this preposition, compared to. So compared to the other stars, Stella was barely a speck. So we're comparing Stella to the other stars. Compared to learning Japanese, learning English is easier or harder. I have no idea because I haven't learned English. It it's my native language <laughs> and I haven't learned Japanese either. You can let me know which one's easier or harder. So that's how you could use that structure. Stella was barely a speck. So let's talk about a speck. When you describe something as a speck, it means extremely, extremely small. So you could say, oh, you have a speck of dirt on your shirt. So I know it's just a tiny amount of dirt on my shirt. So I might not be too concerned if it's just a speck because it's very, very small. Here's another example. The painters left specks of paint, very, very small amounts of paint all over the floor. So you might not even notice them unless you're looking directly at them. So, but notice here, this is the noun paint and then speck describes the paint and it's plural because there's more than one specks of paint. But in this case, it's describing Stella as a speck, barely a speck. Barely here makes it even sound smaller because barely represents not even, not even a speck, barely a speck. But Stella had just as much luck to give as any other star. Because remember, we wish upon stars because we consider them to be lucky. Let's talk about luck and lucky because they're both commonly used. You can say, oh, you're so lucky. You won the prize. When you're lucky, it means good things happen to you, but by chance, there's nothing you did to win the prize. It was completely random by chance. You're so lucky. You could also say you have the best luck. When someone has the best luck, it means they're lucky. So they basically mean the same thing, but this is the adjective form to be lucky. And this is the noun form and you have luck. You have great luck. You have bad luck, which means you're unlucky. If you tell someone, oh, you have bad luck, it means you're unlucky. I'll write that for you. You have the worst luck, which means you're unlucky. So bad things happen to you, but there's nothing you did to attract those bad things. It was random. It was by chance. Hopefully you don't think that at all. You're so lucky. That's the one you want to remember. Let's continue. Being there for someone is what gives stars their inner glow. So notice here, being there for someone, this is a gerund sentence. We're starting the sentence with a gerund verb. Now, all of this in the gerund sentence, all of this part, being there for someone, this is technically the subject of the sentence and the verb is conjugated with all of this and it all of this as the gerund is conjugated as it, or this. So that's why you need your third person singular. This is what gives stars their inner glow, being there for someone. That's the subject. And we use gerund 
expressions when you're making a general statement that applies in most situations most of the time. She wished she could be the brightest like Sirius. Now, Sirius is a constellation. Do you remember what a constellation is? A constellation is a group of stars that has a name and generally you can make some sort of shape out of them. So to be honest, I don't know what the constellation Sirius is. I don't know what shape it forms. If you do, please share in the comments because it probably has a shape and I'm not sure what that is. So she wished she could be the brightest like Sirius. So I guess Sirius is the brightest star or perhaps Sirius is a constellation or maybe Sirius is just one individual star. That's actually possible too. So maybe Sirius isn't a constellation. It's just one star. So let me know in the comments, is Sirius a constellation or just one single star? Okay. You can share that with me. She wished she could be the brightest like Sirius whom people always turn to for advice. So notice here, when you turn to someone for advice, it means you, you seek advice from that person. So let's say I always turn to my father for advice. It means whenever I need advice, I call my dad and I say, Hey dad, what should I do? I turn to my dad for advice. I wrote that here for you. I always turn to my dad for advice. Now you can also turn to someone for specific advice. When it comes to learning English, I hope you turn to me for advice. You come to me, but specifically advice for learning English. So if you do put this in the comments, Jennifer, I turn to you. I turn to you, which means you seek advice from me specific to learning English. Clearly I can't give you advice about the stars or constellations because I don't even know what Sirius is. So maybe I turn to you for other advice as well. <laughs> okay. So that is to turn to someone for advice. And remember, turn to you for advice if you included the word advice. Now let's talk about whom. I know this confuses students a lot, but also just know it confuses native speakers. Native speakers generally replace whom with who because they're not overly confident with using whom. So you'll, you will hear that a lot from native speakers. If you're wondering why it's just because we're more confident using who. You need to use whom when it's the object of the sentence. Who is the subject and whom is the object? So in this sentence, she wished she could be the brightest like Sirius, whom people always turn to for advice. So this sentence is saying people always turn to Sirius for advice. I'll write that for you. So here you can see that people, that's the subject and Sirius is the object receiving the action. And that's why we use whom here outside of a formal language exam, just use who it's totally fine. Native speakers use it as well. But if you are taking a formal language exam, you should know the difference between the two. Let's continue or in an important spot like Polaris. So she's still wishing Stella is wishing she could be in an important spot like Polaris, the North star. Okay. So now I know Polaris, that's the North star. So it's not a constellation it's just one star. And that star is in an important spot, the North star. Ah, again, whom, because Polaris is not doing the action. Polaris is receiving the action whom people looked to for direction. You could also say turn to for direction because people are seeking the direction from Polaris. So you could use turn to as well. Now I wrote the same thing here. Whom is the object? 
And the same difference applies. People look to Polaris for direction. People, subject, Polaris, object, which represents whom in the way that this is written. Sometimes Stella even wished she could be the star that the world revolved around. Ah, which star does the world revolve around? I know this one even before I read it. The sun. <laughs> the sun is the star that the world revolves around. Then everyone could see her. Let's continue. Stella wished and wished and wished these things, but her wishes never worked. You could also say never came true because that's what we commonly use for a wish. Her wishes never came because that's the past simple of come. Her wishes never came true. I wish something, but it didn't come true. I wish something, but it didn't work. Although they use work in the story, it is more common to use come true specific with wish. For example, I hope all your wishes come true. I wrote this here for you. And you could also say, I hope all your dreams come true. Same thing. I wouldn't say, I hope all your dreams work. All your wishes come true. Your dreams come true. So I personally prefer that instead of work, but obviously I understand what that means. In fact, we already know what this is used for. It's used to emphasize. So the next sentence without me reading it, I know is going to emphasize something about her wishes not coming true. So let's read this. In fact, the more Stella wished, the more unlucky she felt. So remember, if someone is unlucky, you can say that person has what? She has bad luck. Luck is the noun and the verb is have, and we have to conjugate it with our subject. The more unlucky she felt, the more bad luck she had written another way. Then one night, Stella got an idea. Got an idea is very common in American English. You could also say had an idea. It's also very common in American English. So you could use either one. Got an idea, had an idea. What if she wished upon a person? Now, remember, this is a star. So generally, people wish upon stars because we want our dreams to come true. So now the story is saying this star is going to wish upon a person. That's pretty cute, isn't it? What if she wished upon a person? After all, stars and people are made of the same stuff. Stuff is another way of saying things, things. So you can say, oh, I have a lot of stuff to do today. I have a lot of things to do today. But do you notice a difference between them? I wrote it here so it would be easier to see the difference. Stuff is considered uncountable, so we don't add an S to it. Whereas things is countable, so you add an S to it. So stuff represents many different things, but it is uncountable. So don't make that mistake. But both of them are very commonly used. Oh, another in fact. So what are we going to emphasize now? Stars and people are made of the same stuff. So now something is going, the next sentence is going to emphasize this. In fact, some people were rock stars and film stars. Oh, that's cute. Because Stella the star is saying, oh, this person is just like me because they're called a rock star or a film star because some people have the title star in their name. We call celebrities stars, right? Oh, she's a film star, a celebrity, and a rock star is a musician. 
So a rock star is a musician, but we also have a common expression in English. You're a rock star. I say this a lot in the comment section. So maybe I've replied to one of your comments and I said, you're a rock star. This means you're amazing. You're amazing. You're a rock star. It can also mean you're doing a great job as well. You're doing a great job. So if you did a lot of stuff at work, a lot of different things, and your boss sees how much you've accomplished, your boss could say, you're a rock star. You're doing a great job, but also that means you're amazing. So I want you to put in the comments, we're all rock stars. We're all rock stars because we are. You're a rock star. I'm a rock star. We're all rock stars. We're all amazing. Put it in the comments. Let's spread some positivity. That's what Stella's doing with this story, spreading positivity. So let's do the same and put we're all rock stars in the comments. So some people were rock stars and film stars, surely they would be able to help her because remember they're made of the same stuff. They're both stars. This is such a cute story. But as Stella looked down at all the billions of people on earth, she realized that maybe there were people out there just like her. Finally, Stella knew what to do. Just one thing here, all the billions of people, you can say all the billions or all of the billions. Both of them are grammatically correct. It is more common to leave out the of and just say all the billions of people instead of all of the billions of people. When we're talking in more of a general sense, you can use of. But when you're talking about a more specific group, so for example, the people on earth, then you can just get rid of of. So ultimately, either one is correct. Let's continue our last paragraph. Now, every night, Stella wishes upon anyone who feels small and unseen. Unseen, this is another word for invisible invisible. A lot of people in this world feel like they're invisible. So Stella is going to wish upon you and remind you that you're not, that you are a rock star. So remember, Stella's wishing on you because she feels small and unseen. So she wants to wish upon someone who feels the same, who feels small and unseen, invisible, hoping they'll look up and find her and feel the inner glow of knowing that they're not alone. So the inner glow of knowing, if you feel like you're not alone, that will make you feel warm on the inside. And sometimes when someone is very happy or positive, we say, oh, wow, they're glowing. We describe someone who looks extremely happy. For example, a bride on her wedding day, as a compliment, someone would say, you're glowing, you're glowing, which is another way of just saying, you look so happy. And that is what Stella is hoping will happen for people when she wishes upon them. And that's the end of the story. It's hard to really hear the whole story when we stop every sentence to review the grammar. So what I'll do now is I'll read the story from start to finish now that you understand the individual words and you can focus on my pronunciation, but you can also focus on the story because it truly is a very heartwarming story. Before I read that, let me teach you one last thing. I chose this story because I thought it was very heartwarming. Heartwarming is an adjective. It's just formed from the word heart and the word warming, but we say them together. That was a heartwarming story. You could also say that was a touching story. Both of these are adjectives and they mean the same thing. When a story is heartwarming or touching, it means it's a positive story and it makes you feel good. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. So now I'll read the story from start to finish. Stella the Star by Siri. Up above in outer space, among all the stars watching over us, there was a lonely little star named Stella. No one had ever made a wish upon her. 
In fact, no one on earth had even looked at Stella because she was so small and far away. Compared to the other stars sparkling in the sky, Stella was barely a speck. But Stella had just as much luck to give as any other star. Being there for someone is what gives stars their inner glow. She wished she could be the brightest, like Sirius, whom people always turn to for advice. Or in an important spot like Polaris, the North Star, who people look to for direction. Sometimes Stella even wished she could be the star that the world revolved around, the sun. Then everyone could see her. Stella wished and wished and wished these things, but her wishes never worked. In fact, the more Stella wished, the more unlucky she felt. Then, one night, Stella got an idea. What if she wished upon a person? After all, stars and people are made of the same stuff. In fact, some people were rock stars and film stars. Surely they would be able to help her. But as Stella looked down at all the billions of people on Earth, she realized that maybe there were people out there just like her. Finally, Stella knew what to do. Now, every night, Stella wishes upon anyone who feels small and unseen, hoping they'll look up and find her and feel the inner glow of knowing that they're not alone. Did you enjoy this story? Would you like me to make more lessons where we read short stories together? If you do, then put Stella the Star, put Stella the Star in the comments so I know you enjoyed this lesson. And of course, like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And remember, Link is giving you a 35% discount off a one-year premium plan. You can click here to get started or look in the description description, I know you'll love using Link and it will really help you take your English fluency to the next level. So click here or look in the description to get started right now.